Yes. Done. Okay. Um, uh, once again, I would like to thank uh, Professor Albert Lafonte and uh, Professor uh, Pounds uh, for inviting us here, and especially for Dr. Amin Hosseini, who has been a good host for us. Um, in this uh, presentation, what I would like to share with you is uh, to uh, talk briefly about Iranian uh, post-disaster reconstruction experiences over the last 50 years. Um, first, uh, that's better we talk about uh, Iranian seismic location. As you can see here, uh, we have four plates, a Euro-Asian, Euro uh, Arabian plate, African and Indian plate. Uh, if you want to know where Iran is, Iran is here. And unfortunately, a, a big fault line is just passing through the country. And if we would like to uh, see, I mean, more in detail, as you can see, the fault line is coming from the south to Iran and goes to the uh, west and, the, um, in fact, uh, continue to Turkish plate and Arabian plate. Um, it means that uh, Iran is a, a seismic region and pro-disaster, especially earthquake. Uh, it is not unfortunate, it is fortunate because we have many, many, many gas and oil uh, reservation because of this uh, fault line. But at the same time, we are suffering earthquakes. And if you have a look at the diagram in right-hand side, you can see the number of fatalities uh, because of the earthquake comparing flooding and something else. So earthquake in Iran is a problem and also is a threat. Uh, but what I want to talk about today is my presentation is folding in two sections. The first section, I would like to introduce the department I have and myself established over the last 15 years. It is called Disasters and Reconstruction Department, or DRD, which I explain more in detail. And the second part, I would like to introduce the um, lessons we learned from housing reconstruction after the 2003 BAM earthquake in Iran. I hope in 30 minutes uh, I could explain more and you get uh, as much as uh, you can. Um, reconstruction in Iran is not a new concern. Over the last 50, 40 years, since uh, at the end of the revolution, we just uh, have been engaged in reconstruction activities. Um, in 1980, Iraq, neighboring country, attacked Iran, and we had an imposed war for eight years. And because of the war, we had many, many destruction in cities and villages. Uh, in that time, I was a student in Bachelor of Architecture, and uh, my professors and number of students went to the uh, damage area, and in practice, we started to rebuild and reconstruct. So it was a good experience for us when we were in Bachelor level of architecture. After ending the uh, war, uh, we continued our education and then we got the um, opportunity to go to University of Sydney for PhD. And in the University of Sydney, we started a thesis entitled Post-Disaster Reconstruction after the Manjil earthquake, which was happened in uh, 1999. So uh, after returning uh, from Sydney University, uh, with a number of colleagues in the Shahid Beish University, we uh, started a new program entitled Post-Disaster Reconstruction since 2004. And until now, I have been the director of the course. Uh, just, uh, I briefly explain what we are doing. This is a multidisciplinary master degree and PhD. What we do, because of the architectural viewpoint of the, all of the students, our main concern is shelter, shelter provision and the uh, process of sheltering. But our viewpoint is a bit uh, different. We assume that 
uh, an event such as a disaster debound the community structure, as we can see in the slide. And the duty of reconstruction is not only rebuilding in physical aspect, but also in other aspects of social, psychological, environmental, even political and administrative issues. So uh, in this regard, what we do in, uh, in our dissertations and uh, PhD levels, we try to be connected with other uh, departments, not only architectural aspect, but all in management, in uh, planning, in even uh, GIS or urban design, urban uh, landscape design and construction project and so on. So um, at the moment we have around 200 very original uh, dissertations which uh, have a, a different, a different uh, focuses in different aspects of reconstruction. If I would like to explain what we do, educational principles, as you can see in triangle, uh, our learning is based on physical and social issues. So we are not only going for physical as a design or architect, but also we are going for social and humanitarian issues as well. But at, as I said before, all aspects of shelter provision is our concern and our courses are all field based. In me, it means that every semester, uh, the, uh, the lecturers take uh, students to the uh, area uh, which uh, have, where have been reconstructed and they stay a number of days and study on the field. What is our uh, aim? We believe that the process, process of providing shelter is more important than final product. It does not mean that final product is not important, but it means that if you have a look at the process correctly, the final product will be very, very good. It means that if you ha we, uh, we have a look at timeline and disaster uh, uh, occurs here, so at the first stage you have emergency shelter in emergency phase, which normally comes in a, a, a type of tent or small uh, and light uh, shelters. Uh, by passing two times, uh, you need a transitional settlement in a, tran a transition phase. So you need a period of time to uh, people to stay in a shelter which is more stronger than the emergency, and then you will go to permanent uh, housing. As you can see this diagram, uh, this is an ongoing process of sheltering. And uh, what we do, and not only in physical aspect, as I said before, you need to have a look at uh, psychological, social, and environmental uh, aspect of sheltering to be a successful shelter. This is our main principle in uh, our course. In this situation, we look at a survivors as a person who needs immediate and basic uh, uh, needs a clothes and blanket at the first hours of the disaster. Uh, then by passing a time, he or she needs a roof, then mattresses, wind pro uh, proofing, uh, a stove and fuel, uh, and also you can see the insulated, and in fact the emergency become a temporary and then permanent in physical aspect as a hierarchy, Maslow hierarchy. I think you know about hierarchy, Maslow in social, studies. But our definition, uh, a human settlement is an iceberg. You know that iceberg, what you see is one fourth of one, it actually uh, exists. He said human settlement is like this. It is very a uh, simple view if you, uh, if uh, an earthquake happens so somewhere and you say, okay, it was not uh, because of the buildings were not uh, uh, resistant against earthquake, so you need uh, an earthquake proof building. It is very simple view. You need to have a look at the roots of the settlement. The first root, as you can see, is why this settlement, no matter city or village, why this settlement has been uh, built here. So first, you need to have a look at uh, the reason why. And then you have a look and you need to study how it has been grown up over the times. By understanding why and how, you will uh, 
understand and realize that why and what was the reason of destruction of this uh, city or um, village. This is what we do. And, most, uh, and uh, as I said, the product uh, is uh, as important and uh, as pro uh, process. In other words, uh, over the last uh, decades, as we are approaching to the concept of reconstruction, we see a changing paradigm over the last decades. You can see in the past, the be uh, people be uh, believed a faith. Now they say it is a choice. And people uh, normally wait for a disaster as a reactive uh, operation. Nowadays, we are thinking uh, forward at the proactive uh, planning. Uh, recovery was uh, the aim of the, uh, of the reconstruction, now it's mitigation. I remember President Bush, after the <coughs> uh, 2004 Katrina uh, tornado, mm, just fired the FEMA uh, director. I, don't, I think you uh, uh, know that. And he had a, a, a famous statement, he said, we were talking about recovery. Now we are thinking about mitigation. So go away. And he fired the uh, director of FEMA after uh, one million people uh, became uh, homeless. So uh, as you can see, crisis management is going to be risk management. Ad hoc uh, efforts is going to be a comprehensive approach as it is the, the main issue of this uh, session and development at risk is going to be sustainable development as it is another issue of this session. Our definition for reconstruction is coming in these pictures. As you can see, if a society is vulnerable and a load is coming on the society more than, uh, more than uh, uh, I mean, a normal situation, you will have a disaster in rehabilitation terms, you need only just back to the uh, normal situation, but in reconstruction term, you need not only in physical, but also in uh, non-physical aspect of community to be strong and build back better. What we do with our students in Iran? As I said before, field study is our main concern in each semester. And uh, normally, uh, in average, every three or four years, we have a, a big earthquake in Iran. So we have no problem in terms of lab. I and mean, we the natural lab we have on <laughs> always in Iran. And people and students are learning by doing, not learning by listening. Learning by practicing. And learning by helping people. Even a number of students just voluntarily uh, normally uh, go to the reconstructed places and uh, spend the rest of the semester with people. And this is our flexibility to do so. So uh, this is what we do. Amma, uh, what we do? Disaster and human settlement is one course, theoretical aspect of reconstruction, sociology and psychology of reconstruction, planning for urban risk reduction and recovery, disaster management, disaster assessment, planning, and management and design of refugee camps and temporary settlement are just uh, some parts of uh, courses we are offering to the master students. What is our framework in our program? We believe that after a disaster, people, uh, 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 people uh, who, are, uh, uh, who are homeless uh, have some need in a context of disaster and uh, uh, are required to be sheltered in uh, some forms. So what we do, we normally uh, try to understand what is the new needs and in which context it means uh, the area to, uh, which have been, uh, where have uh, been uh, uh, damaged and which form of shelter. So the cross uh, of these three cycles will be our concern and in each, every day region we have different issues. So there is no one solution for all disaster area, even in Iran, because of the climate, because of the tribe, tribe, because of the social and psychological aspects. So for every region, we draw some sort of this uh, model and uh, diagram and deal with the problem. Some places uh, need more socio sociological recovery, some places economic, or some places uh, physical. 
Our courses have four workshops in four semesters. The first uh, semester, we have just an uh, introduction to reconstruction, which is workshop one. In second semester, uh, we are dealing with rural settlement reconstruction, which is a small uh, community in workshop two. In semester three, we are concerning to urban reconstruction in workshop three, which is a bigger than in a scale and in population size is bigger than rural settlement. And in the last uh, fi or final semester, we have regional uh, reconstruction. As you can see, a student starts from a small scale of uh, reconstruction to a, a regional matter and we, we ask other departments such as urban planning, urban design, landscape design help us and we share our lecturers together to do so. And this is war reconstruction uh, which uh, the, uh, another number of uh, people have been there. And our principal in faculty of architecture is like this, engineering aspects of uh, rebuilding is, uh, as you can see, but in architectural point, we need to see more human rather than more steel and concrete. So people are not concrete, people are human. So we need not only strong buildings, but also strong people. And a strong uh, uh, building without strong people are not working. And there are a number of pub uh, publications which um, you can see, but unfortunately most, most of them or all of them are in Persian language. I hope some days we will put, uh, uh, translate in Spanish or English. This is the second part of my presentation. Now we are going to BAM. In 2003, uh, my time is 10, 10 minutes, okay. Uh, in 2003, we had uh, we were faced with a major earthquake in Iran, which was uh, in national level. It was huge. Why it was huge? Because of the context of the earthquake. Bam was a historical city, and uh, this city uh, is special. Why? Because it is garden city. A number of date trees are growing up here. So it is not a city, it is a garden in one hand. In another hand, we have a citadel, which is World Heritage, is more than 2,000 years old. So for two, these two reasons, and destruction and raise to the ground, this spe specific uh, earthquake was uh, a disaster, national disaster. It is the reason I selected to present for you here to uh, understand what we did. This is a pre-earthquake condition in BAM, as you can see. Uh, this is in an arid area, but you cannot feel it is an arid area. It's hot, but it is not hot because uh, people and environment working together very well, but work together very well. What was happened after earthquake? This is the citadel of BAM. As you can see, the left one is before, the earthquake, which was famous in the world, and after the earthquake, unfortunately, 90% of the uh, uh, citadel, which call it Arge Bam, uh, uh, raised to the ground, unfortunately. It was the, the biggest mud building in the world. Uh, the authorities and academic, academic people had some dilemma for reconstruction. I just uh, want to brief explain. Rapid damage survey versus accurate technical survey. Repairs versus rebuilding. Each of them needs to have a presentation itself, but just I am going to summarize everything. Repairs versus rebuilding. Safety standards versus rapid reconstruction. Relocation versus reconstruction. For this one, it's interesting, I tell you, we had six months discussion whether or not we rebuilt the same place or another place. And many civil engineers, geo geological people, uh, stress that we have to relocate the city. And we architects and social uh, people wanted to stay there. And after six months, fortunately, we were the winner of the game. Participation versus rapid uh, response. A special organization versus exi uh, existing organization. Public versus private investment physical reconstruction versus economic rehabilitation, 
and local resources using local resources versus imported re resources. I hope sometimes I can uh, explain in detail everyone, but anyway, I will go through. Always we have this gap. Not only Iran, in most of the countries. Academic people have some theoretical issues. Practical people have some uh, problem in practice. So there is a gap between academic and managers. And as you can see, you come here or you come here. And nobody come other side. This is a problem. During this uh, reconstruction, we uh, undertook and conducted a joint survey uh, and joint project with UNESCO Tehran Cluster Office uh, in terms of interdiscipl uh, interdisciplinary analysis, a study on the risk preparedness of ban and cultural heritage, which was successfully uh, finalized. What was our questions for reconstruction? As you can see, the right-hand side, the first problem was where should be rebuilt, who should be built or designed, and how will be built. And other uh, issues which uh, just I, mean, I uh, explained again, this, this was the first city in uh, Iranian history. Uh, before that, we had only villages uh, were imposed by the disaster earthquake, but this one was the first city. So people roles, government roles, construction technology, construction materials, NGO roles, relocation, implementation, which contractors or design process are only some of the questions we, we had in uh, during the reconstruction for programming. Also, we established a, a, a sustain, BAM Sustainable Reconstruction Manifesto, which was a, which was a triangle, the first one was building a strengthened, a strengthened city architectural identity and people participation. It was uh, uh, decided uh, we followed these three uh, rules. And fortunately, the first one done, the last one done, the second one was not done. I'll tell you why. Uh, emergency shelter, as you can see, was uh, a tent were provided for people, and tent normally has insufficient uh, place for uh, living. Temporary shelter, as you can see, was uh, erected were erected in the same uh, plot of land for the owners and household. And after a while, they, uh, the, these temporary shelters uh, were become a part of the uh, reconstructed uh, issue. Where normally we gather together as a decision makers and academic, it was a mosque which was safe, remained safe after the earthquake. So all of the sessions and meeting sessions were uh, uh, done in the mosque. Uh, the, uh, the, the, this, this, this picture in the uh, right down, uh, this gentleman is the uh, uh, designer for um, the comprehensive design uh, project for city. And the rest of people out, you can see, they are from uh, housing foundation, from universities, and from governmental organization. And the uh, photo on the below are the council, um, local people, and Islamic council in city. So a combination of people, academics, and uh, governmental uh, authorities were uh, gathered together and had many, many uh, sessions for um, decision making. One of the outcomes of decision making was we should uh, leave the um, uh, task of reconstruction to, or, to people themselves. So people were uh, given responsibility to follow their paperwork works, from design process to selecting a contractor to uh, uh, monitoring the process of building and getting the loan. So people became powerful in terms of reconstruction. In the middle of the city, we established a, an exhibition site which we introduced new materials, new technology, and new kind of housing. So people were free to have a look at the a type of housing and select which one they want to do. They want in a, a real a original scale and 
a number of private uh, companies, thank you, a number of private com companies uh, established their um, real scale and people just uh, went through and uh, have a look. Um, and this is the new reconstructed house after two years, which was successful. In, past, in, uh, in most of the places, it was successful, new and a strong building, uh, which as you can see. Um, at the end, I have a statement that we must know that after disaster, people become homeless and not buildingless. It means that a comprehensive recovery program is needed to meet all aspects of people demands. We are dealing with humans. We are not dealing with material and construction issues. And also the homeless must have a real role in the process of planning, decision making, and design, which was happening in BAM. So in terms of people participation, we were successful. But in terms of uh, preserving uh, ident architectural identity, we were not. And this is the last slide. Um, children are the most uh, important asset for us. This is Kermansha, and this is temporary shelter. Mind children, please. They are the most vulnerable people after disasters. And even in a temporary shelter, they must be children. Thank you very much. <laughs>